What's up guys, DRJ here bringing you some Modern Warfare 3 PC gaming clusterfuck, man on mine action. So, let's see, I mean, uh, first off, before I get into this game, I just want to tell you guys that I, uh, I really struggled with whether or not to pick this game up at all in the first place. By the way, it's crazy that I have now picked this up and not Battlefield, never thought I would ever do that in a million years. Um, the reason why I struggle to pick it up is because, you know, I... I I don't believe that this game is necessarily bringing anything revolutionary to the table, and it's really frustrating to see, obviously, the same type of game come out year after year after year, and I never played Modern Warfare 2, but goddamn, this <laughs> looks a lot like it. Um, I think the reason what ended up selling me on wanting to buy this game is I feel like the people that I want to reach out with my, uh, my favorite thing that I do, which is basically that Down the Rabbit Hole series, um, is essentially the COD-style crowd. So. I think that's, that's why I ended up buying it, um, and for better or for worse, like this is what I'll most likely be playing. Uh, it's really too bad that uh, this game, just cannot believe that I'm playing this, not actually Battlefield, but this game has far fewer issues than, than Battlefield does, so that's, that's why I'm playing this. Um, so, so let's start off, let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about my experiences so far. Okay, so this is, uh, like I said, playing on the PC, so big shift from Black Ops. Black Ops is using dedicated servers, this is using peer-to-peer. -peer. Big advantage with peer-to-peer -peer is the matchmaking, and it destroys the ability for players to take dedicated servers and all those choices, and it just takes that completely out of the game. So now it's all standard game types, it's all 6v6, the same way that it's played on console. Um, awesome. Very, very, very cool. Uh, when you played Black Ops on PC, you had the choice of one to two non-hardcore domination servers. So, you, you know, not not a lot of choice there. And basically, you saw the same guys all the time. Um, very frustrating, pretty annoying. Um, the big downside to peer-to-peer, -peer, of course, as most people can already figure out, is unfortunately the the lag or the netcode. Not necessarily the netcode, but the the ping, the latency times, the latency issues. There is all sorts of lag associated with this game that you did not get in uh, COD Black Ops. So in Black Ops, my frustrations with the game, you know, was playing a night. Well, all the usual stuff, you know, the maps, the radar, uh, the maps having so many different kill points essentially. Um, the radar, the the weapons that are so strong and so fast, and you know, to a lesser extent, the uh, the kill packages. Um, but you had reliable hit detection, and if I went up on a 1v1 scenario, chances are I was going to win that situation probably 9 out of 10 times because of superior strafing, aiming, anticipation, positioning, all those different things that go into making somebody a better FPS player. Unfortunately, in this game, those things don't count for nearly as much because there's just way too much lag to reliably shoot anybody and it's, it's a very, very dangerous situation at all times. I, I never feel like I'm guaranteed to win any encounter where I felt like if I was running around in uh, COD Black Ops, as long as I was fighting one to two guys, I felt like, you know, not that I was immortal or something like that, but I felt really confident with my abilities to take on one to two guys, uh, especially one. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, the big downside of Black Ops was that 9v9 crap where it was just a matter of time until you were hit by multiple guys from... Um, multiple different corners and there's nothing you can do. So, a lot less of that happening here, um, which is fantastic. Uh, 6v6 is, is the maximum amount of players that this should be played with whatsoever. Um, the other big, big frustration I've been having with this game is uh, the... Uh, whatchamacallit, the... Uh, Jesus, what is the name of it? When you're bumping into your teammates, um, I don't... I'm still not sure why that's being put in games today. Um, Wiggly, you just like to sit in the same spot every time. And unfortunately walked right into that guy and he shot me in the face. Um, I cannot... Unicollision, Jesus Christ, that's the word. So Unicollision is, in my opinion, a, a terrible idea in just about any FPS game because I can understand having it there, say, for enemies, but for your own friendly teammates, that was stupid on my part. But for your own teammates, it just creates so much frustration, like them blocking you out of uh, doorways, trying to back up and you bump into them, or them trying to charge past you and you know you both just grind to a halt. It's a very, very, very frustrating concept, and I'm not sure why it's still around. 
I think one of the best parts about Team Fortress 2 is that Team Fortress 2 doesn't have <laughs> unit collision. It seems like such a, a novel concept. I don't I don't know why they put that in. I guess maybe they're worried about people stacking on each other and you know shooting out 15 guns at the same time or something like that. But I think that the Realistically, will that be happening in 6v6? No. no. Um, besides, if you know, you had six guys stacking on each other, it would take one dude with a couple bullets, you'd kill all six guys anyway. So, uh, man, uh, I'm trying to think how to put this. Unit collision sucks and shouldn't be there. Um, the reason why I wanted to show you guys, though, back to the game, the reason why I want to show you guys this is my first round, I think I'm level 24, 25, something like that now. Uh, as I feel like, you know, midway, third, you know, two-thirds of the way through this, I feel like I started to finally get the hang of the game. Because COD is such a different style of game. And one of my biggest, well, I have two big frustrations with COD. And the first, as everybody knows, is basically the skill equalizers. So, you know, obviously COD has a variety of skill equalizers, right? Like everything from, like I said, the guns that were killed really fast, the strike packages, the, the radar. Um, oh, you're a fucking host. But uh, the other thing that COD does is, as a result of all those factors, it highly, highly discourages essentially aggressive style gameplay. That, that took a lot of fucking skill. Um, and what that means is that, well, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to put this. My biggest strength in Battlefield, and I think why I did so well so naturally, was because Battlefield is a game that, that did not punish you for being aggressive for a variety of different reasons, because it didn't have those those map features didn't have that radar and all sorts of things like that so the guns didn't kill us brutally fast and and we were playing a dedicated service we had reliable hit connections and or reliable hit detection so I think like all those variables were basically lined up um, what happened there is I saw that thing on the ground I wasn't sure if that was an enemy's thing or ours but it didn't go off I wasn't sure why walked away from it ran into that guy's gun died um, still not sure if that was friendly or foe um, so anyway, like I said, I, I need those those things in order to have have a lot of fun. And then, like I said, unfortunately, peer to peer destroys the ability to have, um, like I said, that reliable hit detection that you have when you do use a dedicated server or when you are pulling host. I suppose on console, if that's the way they're still doing it. And I think they're actually doing host on here, although I definitely have not got host yet. So um, I think it's the same either way. Um, Anyway, like I said, very, very, very frustrating, but um, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Um, and like I said, as far as how that affects your style of playing here, it just, it very much so rewards a defensive-minded player. Got two guys, and that asshole behind me sprayed down. Piece of shit. Um, like I said, rewards that defensive-style-minded player, and it makes it very difficult to do these like brilliant moments of gameplay, which is... You know, pushing up and um, you know, basically penalizing people for sitting back and camping like the assholes that they are. But when you have things like you know, radar and UAV and all sorts of stuff, and they're sh I'm showing up every time I fire my gun. It's uh, like I said, it's it's rewarding the the player who sits back and it's punishing the guy who's trying to go on the offensive and, and make things happen. Uh, it's why domination is kind of like this catch-22. You know, you go to capture a flag like that and you immediately get gangbanged by, what, three fucking dudes? Uh, I mean, obviously there's a correlation between KD ratio and the amount of times you go for flags. Anyway, like I said, this game, for a variety of different reasons, punishes players that try to play aggressively. And I think that that's very depressing because uh, I think that playing defensively is um, its not nearly as much fun. And I think that it takes a large element of that that skill essentially out of the game. That that felt when that guy shot me like that, it was probably shouldn't have been sprinting. Um, probably should have been walking. But at the same time, like he drops me instantaneously. So what can you do? Um, like I said, it just punishes that that aggressive play, and that's so frustrating to me. I think actually, honestly, this point in the game was right around here was when I started to. Uh, I had to like consciously re remind myself to just relax and try to take it slow and don't push anything then it's okay to camp and I think that that's just I don't know, I think that's what shitty players do to be honest they, you know, growing up playing 
you know, games that rewarded, I guess, or didn't punish aggressive style gamers. Uh, the players who did poor were the guys that, um, the guys that sat back and camped, and it's, it's such a strange, strange transition to see people play so differently these days in the COD style era, so, um, well, he's fucked, he's fucked. So, all specialist perks, I think I have now 432, I haven't actually, am I actually getting those? I don't know why those buttons are highlighted, I'm just looking down and seeing those, maybe I can hit that button. Those. Um, so I'll have to go in there and, and check. I think right now I have all all the perks. I think that's how it works. Uh, I think this is far more effective than any kill streak package. You know, as far as staying alive, getting kills, doing anything. Um, also. While I'm not high enough to unlock steady aim right now, from my brief experiences with basically just maxing out uh, the specialist package and picking up steady aim that way, I mean it feels... or wait, did I get steady aim that way? I don't really know. <laughs> oh, fat loots, you were lucky the game ended. But I think I have the feeling, I believe that steady aim is much stronger in this game than it was in, in Black Ops, so... I'm really looking forward to unlocking that, and I think that once I do, it's going to uh, it's going to help out a lot. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. So I'll, you know, I'll try to do some Modern Warfare 3 more often. Uh, trying to give you guys around a day or so. Um, anyway, like I said, stay tuned for more.